So this is a video that's going to be a little different than our game reviews. Um, this is a video that we're putting out because of uh, our, our friends and family um, don't totally understand what's going on with this. And um, we kind of want you guys as our fans who do watch our videos to understand what's going on. Um, about a month ago, Luke got really sick and was in the hospital for like four or five days in the intensive care unit. And so basically, I think it started on like a Tuesday, right? Mm -hmm. I got diagnosed on Saturday. Yeah, but I think you got started getting sick on like a Wednesday, right? Yeah, Wednesday at a pool party. So he was at a birthday party where he had a bunch of cake and punch and... Um, he then went and played really hard and got really sick and vomited a few times. So he thought this was a stomach flu and it got progressively worse. And I kept asking Luke how he felt. And on Friday he was like, I actually feel a little better, but I'm pretty sure Luke's just a good guy and just said that to make me feel better. Like I think he was feeling worse and worse and worse. And so when we got up on Saturday morning, um, I had nothing planned for that Saturday at all. Um, I like intentionally left it blank so I could play Mech Warrior online like that whole day. And when we got up, we knew something was a little wrong. Uh, Luke was just like pale. Like he just looked like he had been beat up or something. A zombie. Yeah. So um, with this, we're going to rewind back about a month before that. And, and Christian and I both have worked with diabetic students. We're both teachers. And we know some of the symptoms. And so we noticed that Luke was displaying some of the symptoms. I'm not trying to embarrass you here, but like he was like drinking water all the time. Like we went to a museum and he would stop at every drinking fountain and get like a ton of water. And then he would, um, he would, he would, uh, stop at baseball games. He would drink tons of liquids. We went to like go see the local like minor league baseball team. And, uh, and then he was using the bathroom all the time too. And so we were a little worried about that, um, because we knew that was a symptom of diabetes. And, um, uh, and so anyway, this, this thing, kept getting worse and worse and so on that Saturday we basically uh Kristen Kristen my wife took Luke to the doctor and the doctor um wasn't wasn't seeing signs of diabetes at that time um but was basically going to treat a stomach flu and Kristen basically asked just hey just so our minds are at ease can you check his blood sugar too and so Luke got his blood sugar checked and what, what did it end up coming on that Okay, before I say what it was, just know that normal is 100. Uh -huh. Mine was 500. 500. So it turned out Luke was, at that moment we knew like Luke was a type 1 diabetic. Um, and then he immediately went to the local, local emergency room. Our town's not very big, so it doesn't have a, a pediatric endocrinologist in the local hospital. So we had to be transferred. Luke got to ride by ambulance from our local ER up to the hospital in a, in a slightly larger town. Um, and basically he was there for a bunch of days. Two and a half days, plus I had to get an IV in me, but that was only in for like one and a half. So. Yeah, so he was, he was in what they call diabetic ketoacidosis, um, or what they call DKA. And that's basically where his sugar was so high um, that and he couldn't use the energy that the sugar was providing in his cells. So his body started to basically um, do a different kind of metabolism, um, and at the same time, it was trying to get rid of all the all the sugars that were in his body. And so um, he was very dehydrated because of this, and uh, so they pumped a bunch of fluids into him. They started pumping saline into him and insulin into him. So his sugar in that first day went down from about I think at the highest it was 615, mm -hmm. um, and it went down to about 200 that first day I think. That was like the lowest on the first day, yeah. And so over the next few days, we kept working on getting his blood sugar regulated and lower and getting fluids into him. And he started getting healthier and happier. And we, it was a big shock and it was um, really upsetting to all of us that we were going to, we were going to have this thing going on. But um, I think at the same time, being on the pediatric hospital wing, seeing kids that were going into oncology for cancer or kids that had been there for weeks and months, um, we understood that we were only going to be there for a few days. And that really, even though this thing's going to be tough and it's hard um, and something we have to do all the time, it's not an ending of his life and it's not going to change everything. It totally dramatic in, in ways that he can't do what he wanted to do. It's going to change everything, but just not, not as impactfully as a lot of people have it. So I think we understood that we were kind of not lucky. I mean, I think this isn't good luck that 
he has this going on, but we're understanding that it could be a lot worse. So what is what does this mean? And I think basically since the time that we've been in the hospital, when Luke and I have told and Kristen have told people that he has diabetes, like I would say about four, three or four out of ten people go, Oh, like my grandma has that. Like she ate too much candy and now she has to take metformin and also she's supposed to eat whole grains and use NutraSweet. And like that's totally different than what Luke has going on. Basically, there's two types of diabetes. Uh, the first type is juvenile diabetes, or type 1, and it's often called T1D. Uh, this is the kind that like Jay Cutler has, or Nick Jonas has, and it's an autoimmune disease. And basically, what happens with T1D? Um, with type 1 diabetes, your white blood cells sort of betray you and start attacking your pancreas. Your pancreas make something called insulin, which is sort of like a bridge to let your sugar get to your cells. So they feed, so the sugar feeds the cells. But uh, my pancreas starts not making the insulin, so I have all this sugar build up inside of me. Yeah, so the insulin feeds the hungry cells sugar, and basically there's beta cells inside your pancreas, and the white blood cells have destroyed all those. And so basically because of that, he has to now do a routine where he uses medicines um, and devices to help basically simulate like he has a pancreas. So, for example, he uses uh, a meter to check his blood sugar, and that's that's what his meter looks like. Uh, basically, what do you do when you use your meter? Um, what I do when I use my meter, I have something called a lancet, which um, goes inside a lancing device, and I cock that, I prick my fingers so some blood comes out, I start milking that, and then... Milking, like, squeeze his finger a few times so the little drop of blood will come out. So then my meter has a strip in it, or I put a strip in it, so I sort of, like, scrape the blood off on that, and um, it tells me what my blood sugar is. It's pretty neat. And what's what's your range of blood sugar supposed to be? Um, 70 to 150. Yeah. And I think ideally they want us to get towards 120, but we've been doing really good with that. I think we went almost a whole week within that 70 to 120 range, only going up, or 70 to 150 range, only going up above that 150 a couple times and going below a couple times too. And so Luke's getting better at understanding what his body does when he's out of range. Um, so when you're low, how do you feel? When I'm low, I feel weak and shaky. And I also am kind of a jerk when I'm low, too. You can <laughs> admit that. You get a little bit grouchy, yes. And then when I'm high, I usually get kind of goofy. Yeah. He's a little bit silly. He doesn't turn his mouth off. He just kind of talks nonstop. And so now we know like how we can tell if your sugar's high or low, but what do we do about it? When your sugar's low, what do we do? Um, when my sugar's low, depending on how low it is, I usually eat... Of whatever number of jelly beans. Yeah. He has to eat some sugar to help bring that number up. And so you can't eat like chocolate because it's a too slow of a carbohydrate um, or like anything with any protein in it. So he has to eat like pure sugar to help get that up quickly. Um, and it can be really dangerous. So if it gets really, really low, uh, he could pass out or go into a coma even. So he starts to feel a little shaky too. So when he feels weak and shaky, he usually checks his sugar. Usually, we don't, we don't go below the 50s too much yet, so that's great that we haven't had that. Um, but he usually uh, eats, eats about, you know, 15 jelly beans or something to help bring his sugar up. Or um, he could eat, like, Skittles or Smarties um, and, eat, and drink some juice maybe even. Sugar cubes. Sugar cubes. You could Anything that's pure sugar he can eat, and that helps bring him up into the normal range. When you're high, what do we have to do? When I'm high, um, depending on whether it's a meal time or not, if it's a meal time, I get a corrective dose along with the dosage of the medicine that I need to regular or cancel out the carbohydrates in yeah. my meal. But if it's not a meal time, I usually drink quite a bit and go on a walk with my dad. Yeah. So if it's meal time, what he basically said is we have a formula that we have to use where we take his blood sugar calculation minus 150 divided by 60. And so basically what that does is if it's if his blood sugar was for the sake of an easy number let's say it was 270 which would be pretty high we would take 270 minus 150 which gives us 120 and then divide that by 60 and that would come up with two that means he needs to get two extra units of insulin um, and then his 
at mealtime, we have to figure out what? How do we figure out your insulin? Well, let's talk about insulin first. You have to get shots every day, too, to get your insulin now. Since your pancreas doesn't make the insulin, you have to get shots to get the insulin into your body, right? Four every day, unless it's like a special occasion where I eat cake or something. Yeah, so there's three shots that are the same, which are like a short-term meal insulin, right? Right. They're really fast, but they don't last as long. So they take care of the food that's being digested in that moment. But the human body is always making a little bit of sugar to help keep the body going. So he needs an insulin to have in his body all the time. And that's like a long lasting basal insulin. So he gets a bunch of units of an insulin at nighttime before bed and that stays with him all day. And that keeps him kind of from going up and down too much. And that's a fairly recent development. I mean, that's only been around for maybe, I don't know, 20 years or something that they've been able to do that. So it used to be a lot harder on diabetics even before that, this. And then at mealtime, he has to take a bunch of units. So one way that we create the high sugar is by giving him a couple extra units of sugar or <laughs> of insulin at mealtime. And that helps to bring down the sugar a little bit better um, into that range. And so um, it's a lot different than like you're basically your great aunt's diabetes that would be like, I need to eat sugar-free pudding instead of sugary pudding. Um, and the way how the two are different scientifically is type one diabetes is an autoimmune disease. And it's basically a condition where his pancreas doesn't work anymore. It doesn't make insulin for his body anymore. Type 2 diabetes, basically there's insulin present in the body. But what happens is the cells don't use insulin correctly to get sugar into their into the cells. So um, basically Luke doesn't have any bridges to help bring the sugar into, into his cells. The type 2 di diabetes, the bridge is there. But like the sugar is coming in on like... A tank and the bridge is only made for like a moped so the sugar can't get across the bridge so um, they just aren't compatible they don't work together so type 2 diabetes is a, is a rough thing too uh, but it's totally different than what Luke has um, type 2 diabetes you don't always have to regulate with insulin shots um, and type 2 um, is just it's a different thing um, and so people get those two confused a lot and most diabetics are type 2 diabetic. I think only about 1 in 10 diabetics are, are 1 in 20 or 1 in 10, uh, a number like that, are type 1 diabetics like Luke here. Um, and so, very different conditions, um, but, yeah. You also have to be over 40, I think it was, to get type 2, right? No, I don't think so. Oh. Um, but it's more common in people over 40. Um, so what's been the biggest thing that's impacted you with having diabetes so far? Um, probably just it keeps coming back at you. Like, you'll be having a lot of fun, and then all of a sudden it's mealtime, which I used to like mealtimes a lot, but now I'm like, a shot again. So, don't the shots hurt? Um, uh, no. Not really at all. They're just rather annoying because, I mean... Poking yourself with sharp objects does hurt, but it keeps me alive. And if you didn't do it, you'd be dead. Or in a coma. Yeah. So, I'm sure nobody wants to stab themselves with metal, but if you have to do that or feel terrible and then eventually die, I think you're going to pick poke yourself with metal stuff. So, um, it's been kind of tough, but a couple of things going on here are... Um, we're doing a juvenile diabetes walk, um, so I will put a link somewhere for supporting that if you want to, to help raise money for JDRF. Um, JDRF stands for Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and they're working on a bunch of really good research, and they've done a bunch of good research to help make his life better. So like his insulin now comes into a pen that clicks and shoots the right amount of insulin in. We don't have to measure it out in a syringe. Um, blood glucose monitors are available at home, which is fairly recent. I mean, back in like the 1970s and 60s, you just kind of had to guess, 50s, 40s, you had to just kind of guess on like, I feel high, I feel low, and then just take insulin or eat some sugar based on how you feel. Um, so the fact that it's able to read his glucose and tell us a good number is really good. Um, some other things that are happening that will be happening in the future or are happening too, I guess, is a continuous glucose monitor. We don't have one of these yet, but we'd like to get one at some point. Um, basically, it would measure his blood glucose at all times. So um, it would be able to tell us, like, hey, his blood sugar is this, and every five minutes it gives us a reading. So that's really cool. Um, kind of expensive still, and insurance doesn't always pay for him. Um, actually, it's kind of rare that insurance would pay for him. And then the other thing, too, that would be really cool, too, and we're hoping to get um, going on is, is have a, a, an insulin pump. 
So uh, that would be like where like his insulin is administered through like a like looks like an old beeper, and basically there's a ho hose that goes into his body, and he would punch in how many units of insulin he needs, and then it would do it without him having to get a shot every time. I um, mean, still have to get shots um, for like getting the the tubing into his body, the IV into his body, um, but it's it sounds like it would be kind of tough, but I, I assure you that I think having the pump would make his life better because he could eat cake and stuff between meals again and just kind of get some boluses to take care of that. And he also could, you know, uh, have fewer injections, which would be good. And so the thing that's coming on the, on the future here, there's a couple things that are really cool about uh, JDRF and some other things that are going on. Uh, are the artificial pancreas is on the horizon. So basically the idea that the continuous glucose monitor that we talked about and the pump are starting to communicate to each other. Um, there's one pump that already does that, so if you go low, it shuts your pump off, and, and then you wouldn't you know, pass out because your sugar got too low. Um, and they're also in clinical trials of ones that are talking to each other. They just talk to each other, and they say, your sugar's going high, have a little more insulin. Um, so it's doing the job of a pancreas with a computerized system. And so that would be really cool to have that, so that he doesn't have to always stop and think about, am I getting higher, am I getting low? The other thing that's happening is they're doing some research where they have recreated beta cells in the liver rather than the pancreas, and it tricks your body into not attacking those beta cells, and it would let him make some insulin again um, within his own body. So there's some stuff on the future in the future that I'm guessing in Luke's lifetime, diabetes, type 1 diabetes will be, a cure will be found. It may not be an exact cure that, that replicates what the human body does, but either the artificial pancreas will be there, and he'll have to change out some port sites every few days, but not have to think a whole lot about it or he'll have beta cells created in his body somewhere. Um, so there's a lot of hope for this thing getting a lot better in Luke's lifetime. And really, um, God, has, God has provided us a lot of really great wisdom and help and support in this whole thing. And I feel like God's prepared us for dealing with this um, and that Luke is old enough to help himself with this disease. He is able to... Um, monitor his own sugar mostly and things like that where a lot of people who get type 1 diabetes get as infants and that would be really difficult to deal with um, so I mean that's about it I mean that's a, a rough introduction into it um, what else do you want to say about it I mean like it's your thing um for anybody who actually does end up getting it here's my what my overall thoughts of it is at first, it's scary. I mean, it is. It's just, you have this new thing, you need to poke yourself with needles. But it gets to the point where it's not even the least bit scary and it's just like, I have to do this again? So. Do you think it's ruined your life? No, it really hasn't. Because with today's technology, I don't really have to think about it much at all. Like maybe 30 minutes a day in total. Yeah, and it, for the first few days we didn't eat, do anything but think about diabetes, but I think we're getting better at, it's in our minds, and it's always something we think about in the back of our minds, but it's not the foremost thought that we have, it's not like Luke is diabetes now, it's like Luke is Luke, and he just happens to have diabetes, so we still board game, we still play outside, we swim, we go on vacations, we do all the kinds of stuff, so... It's a changer, but it doesn't mean that things are just going to be miserable and bad. So Wait, um, a bunch of thing, people on Facebook I know said it's a game changer, not a game over.